So I decided to do this video in two parts because I had already gone on for half an hour. And I wanted to allow for people that maybe wanted to see it in different parts and um, whatever. It's just, I just got this feeling that that would be a better idea. So I also picked the card, and this is from Doreen Virtue's deck, and it's Lakshmi, the flow of prosperity. And this is perfect. When I actually put down the card, I put it right under my new crystal. And um, so prosperity uh, with Taurus is perfect. Exactly what the Empress is all about. And I'm going to read from that deck or book. Lakshmi, this card indicates that your prayers about finances have been heard and answered. Tap into your manifestation power by focusing on abundance instead of worrying about money. You have nothing to fear. A new flow of prosperity is supporting you and your loved ones. Additional meanings for this card. Stop worrying about money. Worries only attract money problems. Everything's going to be okay, especially with respect to finances. You have the support to make a desired life change right now. Visualize and affirm prosperity. Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess of prosperity who helps us overcome financial fears and tap into the river of abundance that's available to everyone. It's helpful to put a statue or painting of Lakshmi in the financial corner, according to Feng Shui principles. This is the left rear corner of your home or office as you stand looking inward from the front door. Call upon Lakshmi to help transmute money worries into financial flow. Okay, well, that is very exciting because definitely um, when I talk about these issues surrounding money and love, there can always be the temptation to denounce money. And for those of you listening, watching, you may be the kind of people who have had a lot of mixed messages and maybe predominantly negative messages or just negative feelings, experiences concerning money. Because some of us, and actually Doreen Virtue talked about this, I think about something about having a vow of poverty and that would be obviously if you've had a, um, past lives in some kind of as some kind of religious figure like a nun or a priest or something like that now it could very well be that people that are drawn to these these kinds of spiritual videos have had lifetimes in that capacity and it was kind of drummed into our heads that money is at the root of all evil. And that should not be something that we um, perpetuate. So even if you feel uncomfortable with the issue of prosperity, maybe you feel that there's something self-indulgent about it, that you should do without nice things because it's, um, it's too extravagant or you don't have enough to do that. It's, it's okay. You know, we start where we start, but definitely open yourself up to the possibility. You know, when I started doing readings, I agonized for a long time before I actually decided to go ahead and do this. And I think even after I started, I was still a little bit concerned about it because I felt like if I'm doing something spiritual that I shouldn't charge for it. And there definitely, I feel, is a need to provide 
spiritual food for people where there is no charge. In other words, everything shouldn't have a price. So if I do readings on YouTube and people watch them, they don't have to pay anything for them. And that can be something that um, I can give and they can receive without having to take anything from, from their, you know, coffers to, to be able to do that. Um, but on the other hand, when you are uh, engaged in this for, for a living, if it's your primary um, source of income, you really shouldn't feel guilty about it. You should start exploring what money means to you in the first place because Teal Swan, some of you may be familiar with her, she's a spiritual teacher. She's only about 33 years old or so. She's quite young. And she, and she might even be younger than that. I, actually, she might be. I'm not sure. She's around 33. But she um, had a video a few years ago that I watched, and that kind of tipped me over into the side of acceptance with this, where she said something to the effect that, you know, we all have to live with money. I mean, we all need money to live. And so if you don't, you know, make money from doing some sort of spiritual pursuit, you're going to work someplace. Maybe it's a place you don't like so that you can stay alive. And how is that going to help other people? Is that going to make your the work that you do that connects with the spiritual dimension um, in some capacity? Is that going to make that better? Or is it going to possibly challenge that? I, I hope I have that correct. It was a long time since I've watched it. But it made a lot of sense to me because I thought to myself, you know, that's that's true. So for those of you, I didn't even know, you know, why I'm specifically talking about this, except to say that I know that there are people, I read comments from people who have issues either with, people making money from spiritual pursuits or f just in their lives. They have a track record of not having enough money, having money problems, and, and being quite tormented by it to some degree. And it just stands to reason that if that's true for you, that you might want to look at it. And this full moon offers that opportunity to, to look at your soul or your, if you want to look at it in terms of your psyche and your physical being and where can you come in the middle. That's another reason why I called this life and death because some people unfortunately are still stuck in the first chakra and it's fear-based. They're in survival mode. And somebody who's a miser who has a million dollars in the bank but has holes in their shoes has survival consciousness, lack consciousness. The, the bank statement has nothing to do with their consciousness. They still have that fear-based mentality. And it is something that is causing them to be quite um, limited in their ability to enjoy what they have and that's what the empress is about the empress is about enjoyment and lakshmi is about prosperity so i think i'm going to try to find a statue of lakshmi or a picture of her it's about time for me to embrace that i think and then i have here the elder card now, this is from my Native Spirit Oracle deck. And uh, let me see here. I want to just read these, even though it's kind of uh, a little bit robotic. I don't want to miss anything. Card meaning, confidence, entering your power, standing strong. You are a leader, stepping into the light. Let your truth be heard and felt by others. Make a stand in life. 
You carry deep inner wisdom. You are a teacher and a leader in the deepest sense of the words. You are a beacon for others. Your native spirit wants you to know. In native cultures, the elders, tribal chiefs, and clan leaders are looked to for advice and leadership. When this card chooses you, it's time to step into your leadership role. An elder walks the path, stomps the grass down, and throws the boulders out of the way so that the path is easier for others. Sometimes you might find yourself alone or tired, but know that what you're doing is making a difference in the lives of many. The greatest leaders are those who know how to serve, supporting others to reach their dreams. Even if you've been in the background in the past, right now it's your turn to step forward and become the light for others. The journey. Being an elder and a tribal leader makes, means speaking your truth, even if it's hard or even if you're afraid. If there's anyone you need to stand up to, this is the time. Being a leader means supporting others. So if there's anyone you need to support or make amends with, this is the time. Interesting. Because um, I'm going to, I'll talk about that, but I wanted to just bring in this other card that I got that was kind of similar to that. And it was, it's from this um, Law of Attraction deck and it's called Honesty. And it says, I am fair and honest and that attracts fairness and honesty into my life. And so that can be um, I, I, I see a, a connection between those two cards, actually, because um, speaking your truth is being honest, not being offensive, but being forceful. And that self-esteem that's associated with the, the second house, with Taurus. So if you're somebody who is older, don't be afraid to um, to claim that you know we have such in our culture at least the Western culture we have such a disdain for getting older and that's why I said about death too um, things that we don't like to talk about but these are all transitions and trying to pretend that you're younger than you are thinking that that makes you um, more desirable and, and when in fact you have a lot going for you if you are yourself and you happen to be older you can provide insight to other people that have not walked your path before so so everyone I hope you enjoyed this and I wish you a very deep and meaningful full moon in Scorpio. Take care of yourselves. Bye.